Yeah, it's your boy AG Cornman Boxing. I'm here with my man Quincy Lavallee. Co-main event tomorrow night on ESPN. Coach Felix, first of all, thank you guys for your time. How, how, how you doing today, champ? I'm doing good. I feel great. Ready for tomorrow. Right, how, how exciting are you? Excited are you for this opportunity, man? You know, being I'm, the co-main and all that. I'm very excited. Like, ever since I've been here, like my energy just skyrocketed. Like, it, I've been good on weight for the past couple of weeks. Everything with me just been going great this whole training camp. So I just came here to get in the ring and shock the world. Right. What, what, what do you know about Xander? You know, what are your thoughts regarding him as your opponent and stuff? Um, he's a good opponent. Um, I feel like he does a lot of things good, but not great. The way that they try to sell him also. Personally, I don't feel like he ever fought somebody like me or my style, so I'm going to bring a lot to the table. And I don't think he ever fought like a, a natural 154 pound. Right. He always fought somebody that was coming up from a different weight, so... Once he feel the power, I don't think he'll be able to do a lot of stuff that he does to a lot of people. Especially right. with my defense and everything, he won't be able to do a lot of stuff. Oh, so you're going in defensive minded and all that? Yeah. What, what, what's your thoughts, coach? You know what I'm saying? On, on Xander, his opponent, yeah. and, and his fight, you know, tomorrow. Well, it's a, it's a good opportunity for Quincy, you know. He's been working hard for this, uh, for this fight. He's ready 100%. I mean, there's nothing left, you know, out there to say, you know, is he ready? You know, no, he is 100%. He's ready. We have the plan. And uh, no pressure. I mean, the pressure is on the kid. You right. Know? It's right. Saya. The pressure is on Saya. He needs to perform to the level where everybody's expecting to perform, you know. But I think uh, uh, fighter Quincy brings uh, a lot of the intangibles, you know. Okay. None of the opponents that Saya saw before had, had those intangibles that Quincy brings to the table. So that's what we're going to see and we're going to take advantage of... Uh, and experience. Let's put it like this. The pressure, the experience, and uh, we'll see how he reacts to the thing that Quincy will bring to the table. Absolutely. How long have you guys been working together? Uh, T Rose. T Rose. <laughs> yeah, I met Quincy when he was, uh, he, he came to the gym like he was like 18 years old. Oh, wow. So it's been a while. Okay, and you you out of Louisiana, am I correct? Yeah. How, how was that like, you know, growing up? How was the boxing scene and, uh, I ain't see, I ain't saw boxing since I was like 17, so I don't really I ain't really know about the boxing scene. So yeah, I got into it a little late. I'm only I only been boxing. No, I started like 16 by late. I've been boxing like 11 or 12 years. Now, so. so you started a little late. Yeah. I, yeah. What What made you get into it? You know, what made you be like? Because boxing is not a, uh, your average sport where people you know is a, is a little more physical than other sports to say the least. So. Uh, well, they had a boxing gym down the street from my gym. I mean, down the street from my house that just opened up. And one of my friends used to go all the time, and I used to be like, nah, you know. And then, like, one day, we had HBO and stuff like that, and Showtime and everything. And one day, I just seen the Super 6 episode of Andre Water doing the runbacks, and I seen him. I mean, that dude was good, so that made me want to go to the gym. And I ended up going to the gym, like, the next day or whatever, and I ended up getting in the ring with my friend that told me about it, which he'd been there for, like, three or four months for a good little minute. And they put me straight in the ring with him, I ended up beating the shit out of him. <laughs> He left, I stayed, and I've just been there ever since. Right. Do you have any other fighters besides Andre Ward that may have inspired you or things like that, or that you um, like to learn from? Terrence Crawford, Mel Whitaker, Chocolate Tito. Um, the list goes on. There's a lot of people that I take a lot of stuff. You learn from a lot of different guys. Um, um, Coach, how, how would you describe yourself? How, how do you make um, Quincy better as a fighter? How, how do you help improve him? Well, uh... When I saw Quincy in the amateurs, you know, uh, before he came to me, you know, I kind of saw his potential. I saw that weight, that drive that he has when it comes to fighting, uh, going forward strong. So I knew he had that in him, like coming in forward, going to the body, going to the body, going to the body. So I say, through the years, I was thinking, how can I bring that aggressiveness and, and kind of shape him in a way that he can be more, uh, um, more than have more dimensions, you know, like mm -hmm. know how to box, know how to move, footwork. So we started working on all those things, counter punching. And through the years, uh, amateur fights, you know, on the road, one here, there, taking the fights against anybody, fighting anybody, you know, in amateurs. We never really fight them. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have share a big on amateurs. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, we knew that's, that was the way, you know, to get, to get experience to put them over here. Then after we turned them pro, uh, I decided to bring it to a, to a different country. I brought it to my country, Nicaragua. I brought in 
few oh, times nice. over there. I've went to Colombia one time. So he, he kind of used to that that experience, like being out of his environment mm. and and be able to perform. Because at the end of the day, it's how you do the work, how you do the work in the shadows. Mm -hmm. When you and when you come to the light, that's what it reflects. You know, that's where you go out there and you execute. You know? So and he's a hard worker, super disciplined, and. Um, there's nothing left to say that, you know, he's 100% ready for this fight. It's, he's ready. It's not his first rodeo, you know. He, he, right, right. Yeah, he pulled that upset in 2020 in, in Vegas in the bubble. Right. Nobody, you know, nobody really gave us a chance. For Against that Clay one. Collard, am I Against correct? Clay Collard, you know, and we have the plan, and we he pulled the upset, you know. So same thing here. We have a plan. You have to come up with a plan. We know, Absolutely. We know plans go out the window kind of quick, but you got you to have a plan with, with these kind of fights. We gotta have a plan. We have a plan, and we need to execute the plan. Is it? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Quincy, what kind of message for you have for any kids you may be inspiring and out there? You know, as far as working towards making your your, your dreams come true or getting where you want to get to. Um, just stick to it. Don't listen to nobody. If you feel like you can do it, don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Just keep going forward and stay disciplined. And don't don't let nobody get in your head like about. I mean, that's what we so many times, but people, they used to box and I box. Like, you still box? And this was before I turned pro. You still box? Why you still boxing? Like, and then now I'm the dude on TV and day to dudes, the day to day, -day not sitting on people with day to day jobs, but day to dudes that set down their dreams but somebody else told them they couldn't do it. Now they looking at me and like, oh, I could have been doing that, I could have been doing that. So never let nobody tell you you can't do what you can do. Mm -hmm. Keep going forward. No matter what, if you fail, it's a part of it. Everybody fails. I got two losses. Like, that's my failure. It's, like, it's not really failures, it's lessons. Like, it's Absolutely, those are lessons, yeah. Like, stronger. I learned a lot from that. It, it, it made my mental like a lot stronger than what it was. So right. I was just telling him earlier, like, I lost from last year. It, it, it made me a better boxer. It made me a better, like, a better fighter because I could see stuff. I stopped looking at, overlooking people. I stopped, like, I saw doing everything myself, like, so don't let nobody tell you you can't do what you can. Absolutely, I agree. I always like to say, you know, we don't remember boxers for, for the losses, how many losses is, is what they did in their career, you know, exactly. how they dealt with adversity and things like that. I'll do two of it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not, two of it. <laughs> right. Now, now, Champ, you got any shout outs you want to give to anybody out there before we let you go? Um, shout out to White Sushi, my sponsor. Wallens, Kenna, everybody that support me, anybody that, just everybody, just watch the fight. It'll be a big upset. It's not going to be the last time you're going to see me. After I beat him, I'll be back beating somebody else. And I just keep coming back to him. Like, until they just be like, you know what? You got to sign this one. Man. I'm tired of like, bringing him and be our prospects. So y'all going to see me a lot. Just, just pay attention tomorrow, tomorrow night, and watch greatness and make Absolutely. Coach, you got any final shout-outs you want to give to anybody no, out there? you know, don't miss the fight. It's going to be a great fight. It's always good to come, you know, like, and, and, and comfortable like he is and, and ready, ready to go. So, like I say, it's always it's nice to see an upset. You know? Oh, yeah, see, the fans love it's a good awesome. underdog. A Everybody loves an upset. <laughs> so, I mean, upset. you think yeah, about yeah. it, it's like, you know, so this is it, man. I think uh, we've we done it, and we, we're going for it tomorrow again. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Downtown Boxing Club. Panama City. Panama Downtown. City. That's, that's my, my gym. Yeah. Oh, so nice. Shout, yeah. shout out to New Orleans Boxing Club, too. There's other gym that I train. I train at Booth Hood. Absolutely. Yeah, there's yeah, some good people over there. And both, and, and both gyms. Yeah, oh, so. nice, nice. All yeah. right, champ. Well, where can we follow you at, champ? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Chico World 504 um, Facebook is just my regular name, Quincy Lavalese. Quincy Chico Lavalese. Q-U-I-N-C-Y. And my last name, L-A-V-A-L-L-A-I-N. -L -L no doubt. And and anything you can follow me on, just type in my first and last name. You'll pop up. Where can we follow you at, Coach? Yeah, Are you on social media? Simple. Felix Melsby. On Instagram or Facebook. <laughs> or either Downtown Boxing Club, Panama City. You know, okay, no Boxing problem. Club. Well, thank you guys so much for your no time. Problem, we wish man. you the thank best you. tomorrow thank night you. and the rest of your career. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank sure. you guys. God bless.